with me. But uh, thank you so much, Carrie, for inviting me to be on tonight. And I really do uh, count this as a great privilege. I have learned from Carrie over the years on VoiceCom before we had Boxer, and she's always kind of been a, a hero of the business to me. And I've always loved her presence and her calm voice. And to be able to meet you in person was just really a treat. I was excited to get to know you. And we met up after the event, and I said, I love your presentation. And she said, I love your presentation. And so then we decided to swap it with you um, all. So thank you for taking your time to be on here tonight. I know you have things to do. And um, I just kicked my kids out there doing uh, homecoming projects tonight. So I was like, you got to get out. I got to finish. I got to do this call. But um, I'm very excited to do this call with you because I think it's something that we all can resonate with. And so I'm going to share my screen and get into um, the PowerPoint here. So give me just a second as we get into this. And okay. So what we're going to be talking about tonight is overcoming objections and really learning to embrace those objections or those obstacles as a good thing because what it really does mean is that they're interested. Um, if somebody has an objection when you're sharing Juice Plus, it means that they're thinking about it. And oftentimes we have our own objections that we had to come over, overcome when we first heard about Juice Plus. I know for myself, I knew nothing about health and wellness, nothing about nutrition, nothing about disease prevention. And I had this huge paradigm shift between vitamins and whole food nutrition. And I just thought it was all genetic. And so I had a lot to learn and overcome before I was going to feel comfortable taking Juice Plus, giving it to my son and really making the investment for our family. And there were obstacles my husband had to overcome come as well. And thankfully, Sharon Farrar, she's my national marketing director, direct to me. She was patient with me. She helped me overcome those obstacles. And she just really worked with me. And um, she didn't get, uh, maybe she got impatient, but she didn't let me know. But it was multiple times of her calling me. I even remember standing beside the answering machine and listening to her leave the message and I thought she really is going to call me back. And I was interested. I was. I just I didn't know enough about it to make it a priority. And so it was something that I had to overcome all of that before I was confident making that decision and making that purchase over and over again. So I think we just need to be respectful of people and understanding everybody's at a different place. Not everybody knows right away about nutrition. And so um, it's our job to just help them through that. If we see it as a bad thing, then that's where hurtful feelings come in, rejection, um, feeling like they're saying no to you. But if we really have the servant's heart of serving them, how can I best serve them? How can I best answer their questions and help them, you know, overcome this obstacle? Most people think that it's by having all of the right answers, but I'm going to tell you there is one answer that always works for no matter what objection somebody has. Do you guys believe me that it's just one, just one thing? Okay, so here's this one thing. It's learning to ask questions. Okay, the answer, the best answer is always another question. People do not like to be told what to do, but they like to choose to be a part of something. And if you can help them make it their idea, then they're going to be much more likely to say yes, and they'll feel like they made the right decision and they made the decision themselves. So that really helps us to share without feeling like we're selling them something. And that's something I hear all the time. I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to be pushy. I'm, I don't want to sell anyone to anything, but we love the idea of sharing. And so if we ask a lot of questions, we can find what their need is. Okay. So if I'm telling them all about why Juice Plus made sense to me and what my family's experience was, they may not connect with that because they may not have that same need. But if I'm asking questions in conversation, they will lead you right to Juice Plus almost every time. And there's sometimes you're like, I can't believe she did. She said that she totally led me right here. I have to tell her now. She like, she's begging me to tell her and she doesn't even know it. <laughs> so if we find their need and we connect what we have as a possible solution to them, 
changes everything than us just going into a conversation to tell them about Juice Plus. If you're always just looking for the end, okay, when can I say it? When can I say it? When I, when I can tell Juice Plus, then you've missed it. There are times where I'll have maybe two or three conversations with someone before I even get to the Juice Plus side of things. And that's totally fine. If we're asking questions, they're going to show us their need. So um, you want to share your experience, not necessarily the facts, okay? So your experience is what's going to pique their interest to want to know more. And it's that piqued interest that's really going to spur them on to listen to, um, you know, watch the video or whatever it is. Uh, pe tell people what we know to be true. We always say um, over let's see, under promise and over deliver because we want them to be surprised by, you know, how good it is. Now I'll tell you, there's a girl that I have shared juice plus with for six years now, six years. And their family was like a medical train wreck. And it just killed me. Every time I saw her, I wanted to say, let me get you started on juice plus. <laughs> I got to get you started. Why won't you buy this? Like, I know it can help you. She would tell me about her tummy troubles and everything. I would just listen. And, um, I wanted to tell her if you take juice plus, all those problems are going to go away. But I didn't know that to be true. Right. I don't know that those problems are going to go away. I just tried to continue to educate her when she was ready and I helped her over some ob objections and I'll kind of go over that with you guys too. And I'll use her kind of as the example, but we want to tell them what we know to be true about juice plus you want to be enthusiastic and passionate with emotion so if I'm talking to somebody about juice plus and my face is like this and my voice is kind of monotone you guys have totally lost in just what I'm saying right but if I'm excited and my face shows it and I smile more than I normally do and I'm animated it draws your attention to me and it wants to make you pay attention to what I'm saying so we say 10 at 10 percent more excited smile 10 percent more than you normally do um, be passionate about what you're saying and be able to show emotion. If I'm talking to someone and they um, are upset and they're teary eyed and they're getting emotional about that story, it's okay to step into that emotion with them. And that makes you at kind of a vulnerable place. But man, the connection that that forms is just um, unbreakable because they can see you are a real person. You understand, you're empathizing with them. You see, you hear them. They feel heard and it can bond you guys together and just move that relationship forward much faster a lot of times we're guarded by that you know we don't want to we have to be professional or we don't want to you know get emotional with them but you know if they're telling you their experience their story like step into that with them and you know really we got to share without hesitation I don't know who's going to say yes to Juice Plus. Sometimes they say yes right away. Sometimes it's six years. Sometimes it's 11 years. My best friend from high school, 11 years before she said yes. But I always share without that hesitation, or at least I try to. It's not my job to convince them. I just need to tell them about it, and then I can help them through that process. But if I don't start the conversation, if I'm not asking questions to find their need, and I'm hesitant for some reason, I'm going to miss people because the ones that you think will won't and the ones that you think won't do. And you'll be surprised at who says yes. So be prepared with information, you know, have text in your phone saved under your contacts that have links to the videos that you like to share. Um, have sampled shoes and maybe that I like that trifold brochure that we've got. And there's clear bags that you can buy that have a seal on them. And I put that, um, brochure and then I put chewable samples in there and um, just you know a little little goodie bag for them even a, a order form and I have those in my car and then when I'm out and about I'm always sending the kids like hey go get one of the juice plus packets out of the car for me and they know right where they're at in the doorway and or you know go get the order forms and they know where they're at but be prepared with things so that you can you know easily share juice plus and that won't be a hesitation that you have well I don't have any information on me or I don't have an order form like don't let your unpreparedness keep you from sharing with others does that make sense okay so the main thing is to ask questions so um, you want to help them feel comfortable with that decision you want to relate to them and help them think past their initial objection and I'll share with you what mine was I said um, oh you know juice plus sounds good but my husband said he doesn't um, want to do vitamins vitamins aren't really good for us and he doesn't want to invest our money in that now, if I listened to that cassette tape, which I did, 
why would I say that he doesn't want to spend money on vitamins? One, I didn't know the difference enough to know that it was whole food nutrition. I thought I did, but not really. And I didn't know enough to help Jarrett over his objection. And then when she called me back, I just gave her his objection because that was easy to defer that decision to him. So I didn't have to be the one saying no. Okay, so that helped me feel better, but it wasn't moving me along in that process. And it had she just said, oh, okay, then I would have stayed there and our health would be a mess almost 14 years later. It wouldn't have gotten better on its own. So she didn't, she cared enough that she didn't leave me there. She didn't leave me in that objection. So um, one of the things you can do, these are three, you know, real easy things. You can say, I know how you feel. I felt that way too, what I found was. So um, somebody says, and I'll just use this one just for here, um, you know, Juice Plus is expensive. Well, I know how you feel. When I first heard about Juice Plus, I felt that way too, but what I found was I compare it to the price of fruits and vegetables themselves, not my $8 bottle of vitamins from Walmart, but to the actual produce. Then I realized the value that Juice Plus had. So you, when you say, I know how you feel, I felt that way too, you're connecting with them and you're not saying, no, it's not, it's not expensive. Why would you even say that? That might be what you're thinking, but you can't say that. So feel, felt, found works almost on everyone. And then again, um, asking questions. So to any objection, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to give you some examples of um, some of these that I'm, I'm hearing. So uh, what about, I already eat healthy. I don't know if you guys can see that if those are blocking it. So I already eat healthy. So I can say, really, you eat um, 9 to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day? Tell me exactly how you get your children to do that every single day. Okay, that was a question, I'll admit, but it's not the right tone of voice. It's not the right mindset. I'm already in a defensive mode there. That's not going to work because that's going to put them on the defense too. So I want to be curious and have this idea of, I'm interested, tell me more about that. So I'm going to celebrate. If they say they're doing something healthy, even if I know it's like the craziest thing, I'm going to celebrate, but at least they're thinking about it, right? At least their mindset's in that direction. So I'm going to tell them, wonderful. Tell me, what are you doing? How do you get your family on board with that? Do you eat all raw? Again, tell me more. I'm interested in you. In talking that through out loud, that's their initial objection because it defers the decision away because they're not really ready to make that decision yet or they don't really know enough about Juice Plus to say yes to it. So they're just going to defer that um, away by with this answer, well, I already eat healthy. So if you get them talking, they're going to convince themselves. You don't have to convince them. If you say, um, wonderful, tell me what you're doing. Well, you know, we, we eat vegetables on a regular basis. The kids like them. Awesome. How'd you get your family on board? How do you get the kids to eat um, nine to 13 servings every day? I have a hard time with that with the kids. Uh, well, you know, I, I don't know if we eat nine to 13 servings every day. And so, you know, it gets them thinking past that initial objection. So how about this one? Um, it's too expensive. Juice Plus is too expensive. Oh man, that's expensive. Or we really just can't afford Juice Plus. And I'll say, oh really? Well, tell me, what are you comparing the price to? Just again, I'm interested. Tell me more. What are you comparing that to? Um, you know, if they've been telling me that they've been to the doctor's office a lot, doctor visits, I'm going to say, tell me, um, how much is a doctor visit copay? How much do you pay each time you go to the dentist or to the doctor? Do you pay prescriptions? You know, do you, are you guys on prescription medications every month? Um, this one is a good one too. If I gave you $2.50 and I sent you to Walmart, how many pieces of produce could you bring back to me? And I just smile and I just stay quiet. And they'll think about it for a second and they'll say, okay, I know. And they'll kind of chuckle about it. And I'll say like, really? Like how much could you come back? How else are we going to get 30 of them? 30 into our diet for less than $2 and 50 cents. And one of the kids is free. Like, I don't know how else I would be able to do that without the support of Juice Plus. That's why I'm willing to make that investment in it. Um, you can talk to them about how Juice Plus is an investment in their health, but you want to get them thinking past that first deference of responsibility, and you want them to think think that through. Um, if they smoke, and I know they smoke, I'll say, um, you're a smoker, right? And they'll say yes. Okay, how much is a pack of cigarettes a day? 
It's over $5. Do you smoke a, a pack a day? Yes. Okay, so if you were to add that up, how much would that be a month? Do you know how much you're spending a month? So if you could take half of that and just cut down on half of it and invest the other half in yourself and your wellness, do you think you would be healthier from that? So I'm asking another question to get them thinking. Um, you know, even if you got, if here's the other thing, if you think juice floss is expensive, then you will portray that to them every time. And I've heard people say, like new reps, they'll say um, to someone, look, I know it's a little pricey and I'm just like, no, oh, don't say that. Like they may not have even been thinking it was expensive, but now you just told them it's expensive. It takes the value down. So if you are not confident in the price of Juice Plus, then you need to ask yourself some more questions. Even writing down 10 reasons why you love your Juice Plus. What's the one thought that comes to your mind if somebody took your Juice Plus away if they said no there's no more juice plus like what would you think write down those feelings and emotions why do you take it every month why do you buy it every month those are things that other people are going to connect with but you've got to believe it for yourself they're not going to buy it from you even in your verbiage your tone of voice your body mannerism it will be um it will be apologetic almost. And I've seen that happen. And yet when their confidence is built back in it, you know, they stand up tall. When they're talking, they're very confident. Their voice doesn't end in a question. You know, if you're ending every sentence in a question, then that makes people question what you're saying too. So speak confidently and just know what you know you know, to be true about Juice Plus. If you're not able to do that yet, then you get somebody on the phone or into that conversation that is able to do that and help to transfer that confidence to them. Um, we've got to know Juice Plus is affordable. It's less than a cup of coffee. We've seen these statistics. You know, if your kids are going to the doctor all the time, they're on medication and they're missing school, that means mom's missing work. If she works outside the home, that means their family budget is going to illness. They can take that same money and then transfer that to their wellness, to their health. It's an investment. And if you can help them see that um, and help themselves see that, it's going to go a long way. How about this one? I have to chalk. Uh, check with my doctor first. So I'll say, you know, that sounds like it might be wise. Tell me, what are you seeing this doctor for? Well, um, you know, he's my podiatrist his, or foot doctor. Okay, so how often do you see him? Well, I don't know, like every six months. And how much time does he spend talking with you about nutrition? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I guess we haven't really ever talked about nutrition together. Well, has he ever restricted your diet from fruits and vegetables? Has he told you not to eat those? No, I don't think so. No, no, he's never said that. Would you say that he's more prevention minded or he's more treatment minded? Is he quick to write you a prescription for something or to work more on the prevention side of things? Um, another great question at the end is well, how's that working for you so far? <laughs> you want them to think like, why would they trust their podiatrist for nutrition information? He's never gone to school for that. That's not what his, um, you know, specialty is. Even a heart doctor, that's not what they go to, to school for. They're not going to talk to him much more about nutrition. They'll pass them off to a um, nutritionist maybe, but they're not. You know, they're not really going to talk to them that much about it. Um, they'll maybe mention a couple of things, but it's not what they're trained for. So you want them to now start thinking for themselves outside of the doctor getting them healthy, of themselves getting themselves healthy. So I used to trust that the doctor, I would go to the doctor to get me healthy. And then I realized it was my responsibility to keep us healthy, but what, by what I shopped for, what I fed us and what we ate. And there's a big difference between that. So um, help them see that just by asking those questions. Um, how about this one? Well, I was looking it up online last night. My husband and I looked around and we found some really negative information. And uh, just, you know, I just don't think that we're comfortable making this decision. Now, if I've never gone online and looked for their negative information on Juice Plus, I could be shocked by that information. Do you know what information is out there? If you're new, ask to go through that with one of your national marketing directors. If there's some things that you read that you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't know about this. The funny thing is, guys, it's mostly the same information that was there 13 years ago. 
it's really not that different. It's people that don't understand the difference between whole food nutrition and vitamins, and so they compare it to a vitamin, which, okay, they obviously don't understand it. But um, if you've never looked at it, you could be set back by that. So don't let yourself fall into that. Know kind of what the information is out there. Do I spend time going and Googling and looking at every little thing? No, but if something comes across my way, I'll look at it. Maybe somebody sends me something. I'll look, and it never has like rocked me. It did at the beginning because at that time, everyone thought, oh, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true, but we're not, you know, we know that that's not true now. Everyone can have their own opinion online and and it is that. It's an opinion. So um, I can tell them, yes, I've seen that too, but tell me, what did you find? And then who was the source of that information? What made you trust their information and their opinion? I'm going to say their opinion because that's what it is. Um, what could they stand to gain from putting this information on the internet? Like who is their funding by? And um, are they selling a different product? Because that's usually what it is. And who did they get their funding from? So it's not going to rock me if they tell me that, but it will if I've never looked at it and I don't have a solid foundation and belief in myself. So um, you can just ask those questions and really like who was the source of that information? Who wrote the article? They don't even know. They don't know the guy that wrote that article or that lady. And so I'll say, you know, kind of jokingly, so you don't know his name and he's not taking Juice Plus for himself. So you're more comfortable taking his opinion over mine personally that I've taken Juice Plus for over 13 years. Like, you know me. I, if, I didn't, if I didn't really believe this and know it to be true, would I share it for 13 years? There's no way. You know that I wouldn't. And a lot of times like, yeah, okay, I know you wouldn't. Um, but sometimes this is going to be more like um, someone that you've talked to and it's their husband that went online and looked at the information. So you don't know him. He doesn't know you. You don't have that same rapport. But if you just get them thinking, who was the source of that information? Um, how about this one? I found something for less. You know, I found another replacement. There's about seven or eight different products out there that are fruit and veggie capsules in a capsule. Okay, I'm not shocked by that. I'm not rocked by it because I know what I know to be true about Juice Plus. There's nothing else that has the research that Juice Plus has. Nothing else has the NSF certification. Nothing else has the children's program where they can get it for free. Nobody else has the proprietary process that we have of taking it. I know the purity of the fruits and vegetables that are in Juice Plus. I know that there's the, you know, the growing system that they have. I know behind the scenes. That's not going to rock me to hear if there's another product. So um, I just say, fantastic, tell me about that product. Where did you learn about it? Oh, well, I saw it at Sam's Club on the shelf, and um, I picked it up. Do you know anything about the company? What's the name of it? Is it Juice Festive? Yeah, that's what it is. Um, what do you know about the company? I don't know anything. It just says that it's compared to Juice Plus. And I'll say, I love that they compare us to Juice Plus. They're comparing it to the best. That makes sense that they would do that. Um, you know, we've a brand name that we've been around for over 20 years. Well, what do you know about their safety standards? Like, what are their growing methods for those fruits and vegetables? And how do they get it from the fruit and vegetable itself to the, um, to the capsule? They don't know because they don't know the company. So I'll say, if I sh sent you a video that shows how Juice Plus is made, would you be interested in watching it? And usually they'll say yes. Um, do they have any research on their product? Is there any evidence that what is in that pill, what does it do in your body? Because outside of the research on Juice Plus or Juice Festive, it's really just a good concept. It's a good idea to put fruits and vegetables in, the, in a capsule, but do they have any research that backs it up? And then um, I'll ask them, can children take it for free? Does it say, do they have any program where kids get theirs for free? And then they're like, no. And then, okay, well, that's what the Juice Plus Children's Health Study is. Okay, so again, I'm not going to be shocked by that information. I'm not going to be defensive. I want them to feel like I'm on their side, and I'm just curious about what they're having to say. Um, I already take vitamins. Okay, great. Share with me. Why do you take vitamins? Well, most of the time they're going to say, because I know my diet's lacking in nutrition and I'm not getting, you know, the nutrients that I need. Well, why did you choose to take that particular brand? Um, you know, my mom 
used to sell this kind of vitamin and, you know, I took it when I was a kid or I just found it on the shelf at Walmart. It said, you know, women's one a day. And so, you know, that's why I picked that one. And then I'll ask them, so where did the nutrients come from that are in your vitamins? Do you know, like, that's a pill. Where are those nutrients coming from? Because that's not something I had ever thought about. I just took those prenatals because the doctor said to, even though I didn't like the way they made me feel, but the doctor said it. And so then I felt guilty if I didn't take them and then I would take them again, then I would feel bad. It was like this ugly cycle. So a lot of times people really don't even like the vitamins that they're taking. Um, so where do those nutrients come from that are in your vitamins? Does it have a supplement label on the back or a food label? And then you can compare those to what we have with Juice Plus with our nutrition label. Um, if you could, would you rather get your nutrients from food versus a chemical source? everybody's going to say yes to that one, right? No, I would rather stick to the chemicals, but they don't realize that that's what a vitamin is. It's a chemical rendition of a fruit and vegetable or a piece or a part of the fruit and vegetable reproduced and put chemically into that vitamin pill. So they don't even know that yet, okay? So that question will get them thinking to where they'll want some more information on that. Um, one of the things about um, inviting to your team and you know, if you're thinking about who would you like to have on your team, it's the same, same concept. You want to ask questions to find their need, and this will help you to invite without recruiting. So in conversation, you want to listen for these clues. What's going on in their life right now? So their last kid's going off to uh, or starting kindergarten. Their youngest is going to kindergarten. Maybe their youngest is going into college. Um, they don't have to be at home as much right now. Their husband's job is kind of on the fritz. Um, their husband just lost a job. They're really not happy in their job right now and they're looking for something else. They love their job, um, but they're there a lot more than they want to be or they absolutely love their job. They love their people. They love what they do. They love the networking groups that they're a part of. They love, love, love. We love people that love life. You know, those are the type of people we want on our team as well. Um, I'm really not looking so much for the things that they don't like about their life. I want to look for things that they do like about their life. What's going right? Because often they're going to be positive and busy people get things done. So so I want to find the person that's really involved with a lot of things. And um, you're listening for what financial needs do they have. Maybe she says, oh, I'd love to go on vacation. It's been so long since we've gone. You know, I love helping families step back from that edge financially just a little bit. $500 a month can mean everything to a family. Are they enjoying their life right now? If not, what's holding them back? What keeps them? And you can ask those questions. Um, who do they know that could be helped by Juice Plus? Especially if they're a customer that loves their Juice Plus, you can ask them that question. Do you have anyone in your life that you would like to share Juice Plus with? Who could be helped by this? You know, we could really partner together and make a big difference um, in your network of people or in your friends and family or your circle of influence. Um, would they like for their whole family to be on Juice Plus? They have five kids or three kids and, you know, their mom and dad. And if they start telling you about other people that they have shared with, then that's another clue that this might be someone that um, you could invite to uh, to look at what we do, you know, inspiring healthy living and be a part of our mission. And that really will keep you from feeling like you're recruiting. And um, I know at conference, um, I heard somebody say, we want to be a lighthouse, not a spotlight. A spotlight is out looking. Who am I going to get on my team? Who, you know, I'm going to ask her. I want her on my team. I want him on my team. Now we are supposed to be, you want to be thinking about who would we like to be on our team, but I don't want to hunt people down. I want to be a, a searchlight. Uh, I mean, a um, what's that called? Yes, you already said it. I, a, you know, somebody that's putting out a beacon of hope and that people are looking to and they see me as a resource and that I'm giving some direction and, um, you know, helping to spot the, the, you know, troubles that could be in their, you know, health and in their life and things like that. You know, I want to be, um, I want to be someone that attracts people to me, not that hunts them down and pushes them away. And I think everyone feels that way. So we want to be that lighthouse, not the spotlight. And um, 
I think that was really, I'll, I'll go on this one. I'm not really a salesperson. You know, people say that I, I just, I like sharing juice plus, but I'm definitely not a salesperson and I'll tell them, I didn't think so, but it's good to hear you say that. Um, or I'll ask them, so I don't like to be a salesperson either. Um, but what does a salesperson do that you don't want to do? And then one thing I didn't really mention is after you ask a question, like stay quiet and let them answer. And it's, you know, we want to answer for them. Oh, wait, I know the answer to that. <laughs> you don't want them to be pushy, right? You don't, you want them to think you're pushy, but let them tell you what it is to them that a salesperson is like, that they don't want to be like, is that how other people view you already? Like if I were to ask your friends, boy, is, um, is Sally really a pushy person? Is she like a salesperson? And you know, a nice smile. And I say, no, they wouldn't say that. They would say the same thing. I already know about you. You're very passionate. You compassionate for other people. You have a heart of serve, you know, to serve others. And uh, you like to share what's making a difference in people's life. Like that's why I was attracted to you as well um, or I'll ask them did I come across that way to you and I've had a couple of people tell me yes too and all the times I've asked that question too but both of those girls everybody is pushy to them everybody aggravates them everybody makes them mad you know they don't really have that many friends so I wasn't at all surprised that both of them said yeah you know you kind of annoyed me yes but you're annoyed by everyone so does that really count <laughs> so be careful who you ask that question to no it was good we laugh about it now but I have had somebody tell me that but on by and large most people say no not at all I really liked how you connected with me um how about I feel bad um for making money off of my friends or making asking my family to buy something from me okay so what you just said there is it's all about you is what you're sharing with them only for your benefit you know I feel bad for selling them something I feel bad for making money off of them that's all about you you're not even thinking at this point how juice plus is going to help them what's the benefit to them that has to be first and foremost we get paid that's the extra pat on the back but it's not really what drives us to do this it's fun and um, I know I would still be sharing juice plus whether I got paid for it or not I like to get paid for it and it's okay to get paid for it it's okay to have a business it's okay to um, we don't have to be professional volunteers it's okay to volunteer for some things but your time is valuable too you have a family and it's okay for you to get paid for the time that you put into this and you don't have to be embarrassed by that so that's one thing it's kind of a um, outer sign of an inner confidence that's just not there yet for yourself but are you sharing for them for your benefit or theirs and it's always for them um, and what if you help them could help them but you chose not to share it with them and somebody else tells them later and they come back to you and say why didn't you share with me you knew this could mm. help me but you didn't tell me about it that would be even worse so I hope some hope some of these questions um, that I've given you tonight will just help you think through things a little bit more and um, help your people that you're sharing to be able to think through it as well because if you can help them overcome their objection that they have then they're going to make a really confident decision either in buying juice plus or in joining your team and that's who we want we want somebody that wants to be a part of what we're doing not that we've talked into it because they'll talk themselves out so I hope that was helpful Carrie that was wonderful and some of the things you said like help families step back from the edge financially that's so vivid would you rather get your nutrition from natural or chemical source and no we're not professional volunteers so all the time you're talking, I was nodding, just like I was in Huntsville, but it was interesting because I picked up so many different things this time. So I'm so thankful it was recorded and we can share it with, with so many people and we can listen to it again. Yes. Thank